Anna Caroline Beal. I am the youth director here at Wellspring Community Church. I'm giving you a word of encouragement from the Lord today. One of the things that God has really been putting on my heart is just fixing your eyes on Him when these things happen. And so I want to go ahead and turn to the Word. I want to turn to Hebrews 12, 1 through 3, and let's see what the Lord has to say about it. So Hebrews 12 is a beautiful passage to me because it's basically being written in a time where intense persecution is rampant on the body of Christ. And it's almost the kind of passage where if the apostles and the people of God, if they can handle it, if they could have handled it back then, then we can handle it now. Hebrews 12, 1, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders us and the sin that is so easily entangles. Okay? There's two things that I really get from this. Number one, we are surrounded by people watching us. There is an entire world out there that is looking at us saying, how is the church going to handle this fear and anxiety? How is the church going to handle this coronavirus when everyone else is in a panic? You know, it's not about us, it's about Christ, but that eyes are going to be on us. And then if we allow Christ to come into our situation, He will exalt us for His glory in the way that He wants us to. And number number two um, in verse one is that it says, throw off everything that hinders and the sin that is so easily entangles. Um, I love the Lord, is it mainly because He walked everything that we go through. He knows that this sin is easy. He knows that this sin is so, but we're so susceptible to this sin, even though we try our, our best. You know, Jesus in Gethsemane said, you know, for your heart is willing, your spirit is willing, but your flesh is weak, therefore rise up and pray. You know, and he knows that our flesh is weak. And so he knows that fear and anxieties are so just natural for us to fear, have as humans and feel as humans. Okay. And let us w run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Sometimes we have to persevere, not just through fear and anxiety, but we have to persevere through faith. You know, faith is a choice, and it's a hard choice sometimes, especially when we're on the verge of an economic downturn, especially when our loved ones are in the hospital and cannot be visited by any of us. He knows that He has equipped us to persevere before we even deal with what we have to deal with, which is beautiful about Him. Okay, verse 2. Fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, for the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Um, you know, when the waves get large, when the waves get fast, when the waves get huge, I mean, we really, our eyes go straight to the waves. And so, one of the things that God has really been putting on my heart is fix your eyes on him, you know, instead of playing that video game, instead of watching that TLC show, instead of watching the news, instead of looking on Facebook all the time for your updates, instead of honestly hanging around that negative friend that's going to be negative this whole time, read your word, be in that prayer journal, watch The Chosen, or watch Pure Flix, watch a hope-filled Christian movie that is going to help replace. I mean, that, I mean, fix your eyes on Jesus. Literally surround yourself with Jesus in this time. Because it says here, after fixing our eyes on Jesus, that He scorned shame. He scorned the shame of the cross and made it His own symbol. Just think the cross was a symbol of death, you know, years ago. And then when He was crucified and he rose again he made it the exact symbol of life just imagine what he could do with our fear and anxiety if we allow ourselves to fix our eyes on him and allow ourselves to let him take that image of fear and anxiety let him take the coronavirus and everything it means and put his life there at the cross just think about that for a minute and let him do that this is what happens when we fix our eyes on him he makes a monumental marker out of this time Okay, and continued, um, consider him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. You know, Christ has been through worse. He's been through worse than what we're going through right now. And if he can go through worse and if he can, can come out of it strong and if he can empower his apostles to come out of it strong, even to the point of their martyrdom, can he not do the same thing for us? It says, so that you will not grow weary God reminds us that He's been through everything. God reminds us that He 
has endured such opposition. He let the disciples go through the turmoil for him in order to remind us that we too can go through that, that we too can go through this coronavirus. And so we will not grow weary and lose heart. You know, sometimes we look at this coronavirus and our instant reaction is to lose heart. And he said, nope, I've been through worse and I can pull you through. I've been through worse so you can be pulled through. I think let that sink in for a minute. He w- went through the worst. He completely, his, he dealt with the turning away of his father so that we would never have to go through that. That is the worst thing that could ever happen to us and he's already done it so we would never have to. So be encouraged today. Do not grow weary, do not lose heart. Let the dry bones be raised in your heart and in your body. Let his word fill you up. Let it nourish you. That's basically what Hebrews 12 1 is telling us to do. God bless you guys. I miss you guys terribly on Sunday mornings. I miss getting my hugs. I miss the words of encouragement. I miss praying together. My youthies, I love you. Keep strong. Put the video games down for a little bit. <laughs> Be in your word. Um, you guys have a wonderful day. Be encouraged. And 